Conceived in chaos, birthed in stolen magic, torn from fate, child of two fathers, treacheries in treacheries, winter is broken. Puppet king upon his throne, drinking flattery and lies. The power that grows in him is not his own. In the east it did begin, as it will end. As it will end. From behind the veil she screams. Madness and rage. Madness and rage. It's been 12 years since THQ Nordic released one of the most underrated action RPG games ever. Back then people still played Skyrim. Now let's be real about Skyrim. No one will still play it if it wasn't for those thousands or even millions of mods that you can find on Nexus mod site. It will be forgotten a long time ago, just as Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning. Mass Effect 3 was released that year as well, and those who didn't miss uh, The Witcher 2, Assassins of uh, Kings during that period of time set a new standard for major, adult and serious stories in the genre. We were in the twilight of the last generation, and this game, in such an environment, had little room to breathe and went largely unnoticed despite all the efforts from those who dived into it. Eight years later the history repeats itself and the chances of this game shining this time were only slightly higher. In fact the remaster is not so good and I'd say unnecessary to that point that you wouldn't even call it a remaster as much as a port for the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. The real reason why, I would say, Amalur made it to the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One consoles is Fates for an Edition, an expansion that THQ Nordic was planning for 2021st. No one is going to play Kingdoms of uh, Amalur re-reckoning because it's a good remaster, but because it's an outstanding RPG. This is an opportunity for those who have not yet become acquainted with Amalur to do so now while old fans have the opportunity to revisit their game, while waiting for a new expansion that may even introduce us to the next install in the series. So what's the magic of Amalur and where is Re in Re-Reckoning? Well, improved graphics, new graphics and camera settings, quality of life changes, all previous DLCs including Teeth of Naros and The Legend of Dead Kill, a new expansion called Fates War released in December 2021. This game is a perfect example of an action RPG with strong tones and epic fantasy packed in a distinctive visual style. The presentation of the game can be debated, but I am of the opinion that, bearing in mind that Amalur has a concrete visual identity which does not pretend to realism as much as to imagination, wit and charm, which sometimes give it an almost childlike tone, is visually as legitimate as any other arty title, although Today, it is not as flashy as it used to be. The world of Amalur is expansive and full of stories and deep lore like the ones we can find in, uh, I don't know, uh, World of Warcraft, Elder Scrolls, uh, Dragon Age, etc, etc. And uh, with even stronger Tolkien tones. In Amalur, uh, problems are often a matter of life and death uh, and everything seems extremely important. Even if you are not dealing with your primary epic adventure, the secondary quests boil down to breaking cities from the plague and protecting locals from terrorist units. While some segments of the main storyline are just like uh, those uh, of the Lord of the Rings series, uh, from philosophical conversations uh, with the soul of the world's tree, uh, through segregation by elves to large-scale wars and the sour on waiting for you at the end, Amalur is truly magical and hides a lot of secrets. That doesn't mean that Amalur looks phenomenal today, although this was the perfect opportunity for THQ Nordic to make it happen. 
which is very painful because biggest problem I always had with Amalur is an outdated and very rough interface that needed to be burned and redesigned from scratches. Amalur will often remind you that it is from the later years of the last generation, but not to, to the extent that it is not playful or even visually uninteresting. Some animations and the scenes may even surprise you because uh, at the time of Skyrim they were more characteristic of hack and slash and to beat them up rather than uh, an RPG games and even action games, especially when it comes to boss fights. Uh, old Kratos will feel like uh, at home here. The acting is completely mediocre and won't make you raise your eyebrow too much. Uh, the music background is, uh, however, a moment in which uh, Amalur, as far as uh, the presentation is concerned, is really brilliant and at times manages to fill the visual holes that you will come across. The physical world is broken into a map more like uh, the one found in uh, MMORPG games like uh, World of Warcraft, uh, Elder Scrolls Online, etc. etc. Such a construction entails a lot of uh, travel uh, from one magical location to another that is in harmony with the re region uh, in which you are located, of which, uh, of course, uh, there are many. In Amalur you can often feel lonely and the lack of graphic uh, presentation will make you sometimes think you're going through an empty world, but that couldn't be further from the truth, because the game never gives you too much space to breathe. Just wondering how long it takes you to get to your locations. Monsters ready to tear you apart will pop out of bushes or uh, alternatively you'll run into someone who needs your help. As for the main adventures, uh, you will spend most of your time in the company of the main characters. For all the good and bad things that I'll state about the game in this uh, video, in the end I think the game is average at the best. Uh, as I said, re-reckoning isn't the perfect package and it doesn't do anything new besides stuff I previously mentioned. Not that I've noticed at least, but who knows, maybe I missed something out. In terms of quests, types, story or other conventions uh, of the fantasy themed RPG, but its gameplay is pretty good. The story is ok and combat works and feels polished, but the best part of the game is the beginning and the end. So let's talk about better things first. I won't bother you that much with the lore, I'll leave it to you when you try it, if you decide to do so. The lore is good, but it could be definitely better for an RPG, especially because they had 8 years to make things better. The original game was uh, released, uh, as I said, back in 2012, Kingdom of Amalur Reckoning. So, where Amalur really shines is a gameplay underneath uh, a scenting mask inspired by the Fable and the uh, World of Warcraft series slice a system of struggle. Although the system is somewhat simple uh, than the ones we are familiar with, uh, in Amalur you have a lot of control over the fight and plenty of room to experiment with the build of your character. Talking about the build of your character when it comes to kingdoms of Amalur reckoning character building, that's where the game really shines, with countless of different talents, destinies and character specs. You are free to choose whatever suits you, your gameplay the most. Uh, is it pure might build wearing a big two-handed swords, maces, a mage build that summons uh, minions, uh, casting fireballs uh, from the sky, etc, etc, or a deadly rogue uh, build which uh, specializes in sneaky fast skills with backstabbing poison daggers and bows. Furthermore, you can mix talents and get the best of all three trees uh, and get new yet unknown destiny for your character. In my opinion, that's the one of the best things in the game and I think character building in Kingdom of Amal Reckoning is better than character building in, let's say, Skyrim or uh, World of Warcraft. The game movement and combat feels fluid and you can sense that they had been working hard to polish the game, which is something I respect. The introduction of the game was well made and really gets you going and exciting to explore the world. The amount of content, uh, side quests and uh, adventures uh, is still impressive today and can uh, address as an uh, oversight snack when you realize that re-reckoning contains all the 
accessories uh, for the original game. When all is added up uh, and uh, subtract and seeing everything in Amal or in one playthrough can cost uh, up to 200 hours. Amalur, like other RPG, remembers your choices, but you'll have a hard time feeling it uh, quickly. The game doesn't have a built-in moral system, so it will never judge you. Nor is that the point with Amalur. There aren't even lessons like the ones we are used to in morally uh, grey RPG titles. There is only one cracked uh, role-playing experience, because you're a heroina or hero. Uh, depending on how you built them, is almost an almighty deity. Which uh, brings uh, us to the first uh, point where Amalur really stands out. Kingdoms of Amalur re-reckoning can get you long if you let it and decide to do all the side quests because there is a lot of them. Talking about exploring, first 15 to 20 hours of the game that you are actually discovering something new feels really good to explore. But later on it just get boring. Fully voiced NPCs uh, throughout the world don't all sound like five people doing the exact same voice for all of them. It's something I appreciate. There's a lot of actors involved. Amalur's combat is still its stronger aspect. It's, uh, it's a satisfying and uh, arcade uh, take uh, on RPG combat. Timing and skill are almost as important as the abilities you've selected. Uh, or what weapons and armor you've got uh, equipped and there's plenty of them. Things get complicated when you realize that the game actually allows you to use all three sets of uh, any combination. Suddenly you are a great warrior waving his big uh, sledgehammer or two-handed sword. One minute later and you are firing a sea of fire from his uh, stick. Uh, the next uh, moment uh, you are a raider. And one minute later, uh, uh, you are shooting uh, arrows uh, uh, at your opponents uh, from a distance. And the next, uh, he flies in with the same uh, sledgehammer I mentioned uh, earlier. Depending on how many points you have invested in which set, you will unlock special titles that award certain bonuses to your character. So if you focus on might and sorcery, you become a battle mage. Finesse and sorcery, maybe... It's spell clock. All three, your character is a universalist. Of course, nothing prevents you from focusing on just one set for roleplay purpose or simply a preference uh, and staying a pure warrior, rogue or a mage. Playing in this kind of thing uh, gives you complete freedom. That's how classes in Amalur work, of which I listed six. There are 40 of them. And uh, in my opinion, uh, character building uh, in uh, Kingdoms of Amal Reckoning or Re-Reckoning is uh, better than uh, character building in uh, World of Warcraft, uh, maybe even maybe even Skyrim. Uh, let's talk. Uh, let's talk about things I didn't like in game. The game is too easy unless you put it on very hard mode. Very hard mode makes it normal if that makes any sense. Uh, to you, uh, especially if you've been dealing with uh, Dark Souls uh, 1, 2, 3, uh, Elden Ring uh, and uh, all those uh, kind of things, and especially if, you, if, you, if you've been dealing with uh, Dark Souls 1, 2, 3 without any guides, without any tutorials, uh, YouTube and all that kind of things, you know what I mean. So uh, all you have to do is uh, accept the quest and follow Yellow Circle while being totally brain AFK and that's all. That's something. Uh, that's something they could they could change. Uh, the next thing is uh, that you can easily evade the monsters around just by running past them. Uh, they could add a mount uh, or even better, a few of them, so that players can choose uh, uh, which mount they want, etc., uh, etc. Et they could add a lock on target, just like in Dark Souls, Demon Souls, and the Elden Ring. Uh, you get what I mean. They could make the game more challenging, that's for sure. Game lacks of uh, cinematics. They could add uh, cinematics uh, to each uh, boss fights, etc. They could make a game uh, plus after you finish uh, the first uh, one, which will be harder but more rewarding. They could add more races in the game, such as dwarves, gnomes, fae, uh, with uh, different uh, racials, uh, 
they call that uh, all that kind of things you know crafted weapons are almost always stronger than epic and golden ones which is quite disappointing we all want that better piece of gear to make our characters stronger and it's uh one of the bigger reasons we are playing the game after all they should have made the higher rarity gear as a reward for quests rather than scattering them all around the world which is huge and that forces you to invest in uh, in uh, detect the hidden uh, to actually be able to to get some gear combat feels fluid and polished uh, but it also get uh, repetitive and uh, really fast you can unlock uh, new moves uh, for your weapons but in the end the total number of moves that weapons or wep that weapon or weapons has is very limited conclusion kingdoms of Ambalur re-reckoning is not a perfect experience i mean what game is perfect experience in the first place many influences are visible from uh, flight ship MMORPGs to Japanese hack and slash giants. Amalur is also not a mandatory diet for anyone who loves RPGs. Amalur is uh, prim uh, primarily an experimental western action RPG far ahead of its time. So far ahead that only technical things like two segmented open worlds uh, condition jumps and sheer graphic uh, give it away like a not so modern game many of the things that Amalur offered back in 2012 we take for granted today with all that in mind Amalur is worth your time today and there's a little chance you won't fall in love uh, with uh, this game if you give it a chance of course only when you manage to forget about the racial animations of the last part too and the wind that uh, leads you to Ghost of Tsushima. Is it worth playing in uh, 2024 to, uh, and the uh, price of the game? Uh, definitely, it's definitely worth playing uh, Kingdom of uh, Amalur Re-Reckoning in the 2024, uh, especially for that price. Uh, I don't know how much I paid for it, uh, 20 30 euros something like that that's cheap that's cheap for this game and uh yes it's uh it's definitely worth it uh that will be pretty much it see you next time all the best